Once I realized that you could do prayers and you could do chants and you could make this that came out of your soul's calling and not your ego, yes. the whole thing changed. When you meet someone and destiny presents that yes. and you say yes, the beginning of opportunity appears. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. We are here today, gathered here today to talk about meet, swim in, find out what's going on behind the scenes of one of my spiritual millionaire friends. Today we have Deborah Silverman, who is a world-renowned astrologist, a firecracker of a human. A She oozes love and energy and power and has figured out not just like the fountain of youth, but figured out how to set herself up in such a way that her business does really well. And so let's dive right in and find out what is going on. Deborah, good to see you. How you doing? Well, first of all, I didn't know I was a millionaire astrologer until you mentioned it. Yes. And then I stopped and thought about it and I was like, I'm a millionaire astrologer. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't occur to me to identify that way. And yes, I've had a definite success story. So it's all because of the passion. So we'll be talking about passion. That. So let's let's start there. And what I want to understand is like, when was it not like this? Most of my life, that's funny. <laughs> it was really my second Saturn return when I came close to 60 that somebody said, have you ever thought of doing an online school? And I was like, a what? Because the generation I came from, the internet and cyberspace was not a language that we spoke. So it huh. didn't occur to me. So I said to her, well, what do you mean? Her name was Destiny. So every Monday morning, I had a meeting with Destiny. And Destiny would help me design. <clears throat> she simply encouraged me to make a curriculum, which came out very quickly because I'd been teaching for so many years. Yes. And then she told me about this whole behind the scenes, how you do funnels and what you do to do ads and Facebook ads and magnets. And the I was like, what? And I followed her lead as a wise woman does mm. when someone shows up with the name destiny. Hello. But more than that, when you meet someone and destiny presents that yes. and you say, yes, the beginning of opportunity appears. Mm. It was with three false starts. I want you to hear that. Three different men came into my world over five years previous that wanted to make my success. Mm. But it wasn't until the chemistry was right. And they were there was a really, if I be perfectly honest, there was a lot of failure on my part mm. of not being discerning mm. and thinking and trusting other people until they called me an egomaniac and it got all kind of tense and it mm. turned into lots of drama. And by the end of that, I was like, you know what? I now have a company with 50 women. I realized working with men was not my forte. Okay. I love men, but that became clearer. And then the second part was when you can trust someone deeply, as I did with Destiny, and I knew that she trusted me, and we did prayers, and we did meditations, and chanted, and brought our spiritual energy together, the school just took off. That's been nine years. Wow. Okay, so just to rewind back, you said you were 60 when this... 58 when it first started, 60 when the school started. So anybody running the game right now called I'm too old, or I'm too young, or whatever the thing you're doing, just let that land for Good a moment. catch. Right? 58. I have a friend, another spiritual millionaire named John Wineland, who it didn't even crack off for him until 47, 48, 49, right? And so there's a few things I want to extract out of what you just said, and you nailed both of them. But I want to understand the part around like praying together and like, how did you do that? Was she already like that? Yes. She, was okay. a, she and I both had a secret about mm. being priestesses. And that what was missing with all the men before. Mm. I didn't realize it with my, without my spiritual orientation in mm. the middle of my business. I didn't know that. Mm. I had business separated from my spirituality. And that. once I realized that you could do prayers and you could do chants and you could make lists that came out of your soul's calling and not your ego, yes, the whole thing changed. Mm. And then it became so easy. So I had a lot of lessons, I have to just say, on the way. So mm -hmm. for those of you that haven't figured it out yet young old or whatever you have to get it wrong to get it right that. and it's got to have the courage to get it wrong and my kids were watching and I was financially a single mom and I was like this is embarrassing but I didn't stop so one of the rules I don't know if this is on your list you just don't stop mm -hmm. if you've got a dream you keep trying even after you seem to have failed quote yes. unquote yes. and then the spirituality is the forgiving part mm. the compassion like I had a lesson to learn mm -hmm. and I could forgive those people and I wasn't going to judge them that was my teaching what was I doing not discerning it was a big lesson for me that okay so this is so good for a multitude of reasons one what I'm hearing you say and I'm just repeating this for everybody listening, is she was willing to jump in and find out, right? You just found out. It's true. And while you were in it, you realized that something wasn't aligning. 
and you paid attention to the writing on the wall with these particular men and these people you were working with. And did they quit? Did you fire them? How did those things end? It was very, very dramatic. In one case, a man called me and said his wife had told me that he's never allowed to talk to me again. His lawyers would talk to me in the morning and that he promised her she'd never click and the lawyer called me in the morning. And it was a clean cut mm -hmm. and it made no sense because the whole storyline that was in this imagination, but that was one way that it was, I mm. understood after all three of them ended without going into detail that it was God's will mm. to help me to learn the lesson about discernment and then to not judge what happened behind me. Because mm. you can imagine it's embarrassing when you start and stop yep. and you feel like you're getting it wrong what you thought you were getting it right. That. And you were on a roll and you felt so successful and then something falls apart. And it was really humbling. Yep. And I am now really good at saying I was wrong. Mm. I'm sorry. And I have to go. Mm, I love it. Okay. Now I'm going to go jump even further back because one of the principles and things we talk about in Spiritual Millionaire is the quote from the Gnostic Gospels of Thomas, which reads, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Yes. So what I'm hearing and seeing in you that I want to like really hit on and ask you about, because I actually don't know the answer to this, is when did you say yes fully to your calling? I think I'm an exception to this rule. Okay. Because my personality type has never said no. Mm. So I am the person that from a very young age knew what I wanted. I know this is different because I'm an astrologer. Yes. And everybody comes to me with the question, what should I be when I grow uh -huh. up? And when will it happen? And will I get married? And will I have kids? And I'm like, uh-oh. And I can use the chart to tell that. But my situation was from a very young age, I was in devotion spiritually. You already got so it. So I just said, God, I get directions from home office. Count on me to fill them out. Mm. I just did everything I was told, even when mm -hmm. it didn't work. Yes. So if, that's, if I had to say the secret formula of mm. my success, is that I always say yes, and then I say no. I absolutely love this for a multitude of reasons. And I don't think that whether you got it at eight or you got it at 80 matters. I think what matters more is that you said yes. And that's the thing I want to make sure anybody listening or watching this is catching is she was willing to bring forth what was within her. And I think a lot of times we try to do things that will make us money. Spiritual people have this thing where they start down a path, and then, and I did this myself, and then they look at other people's yards and see what they're doing, and then we go, oh, well, so-and-so is doing it like this, so I'm going to switch my whole thing up and make it look like hers. And what it sounds like to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is you just literally did you. Completely. <laughs> that is totally true. I think one of my successes as Deborah Silverman is mm. that I am very single-eyed about being mm. myself. And that's mm. what I teach because I'm embodying mm -hmm. it. So, but that's another hard thing for the audience. There's many people who are entrepreneurs who live with insecurity. Mm -hmm. Am I really that good? Do I really have something to share? Do I really know how to do business? Am I really? And all those questions get answered as an astrologer. I can help. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, you have to, to your point, in my heart of hearts, my devotion, mm -hmm. my total commitment to God's gift that I was given, mm -hmm. never deviated. Mm. I've been absolute. Okay, I'm going to ask you a hard question because this is what I do. <clears throat> and you don't have to answer it. I said the same thing to Robert Glover and other people. You do not have to answer this, but I, I want to understand. Was there anything along the way, kids included, where it cost you something? God, are you kidding? Mm. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Can you talk about or sort of... Allude? I would say my ego got deflated. Those three failures hmm. and the include, like how I turned on myself hmm. and how I had to suffer through and go to therapy and have my best friend say, no, 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 this is not you. That was him. I was like, are you sure? Because it happened three times. Hmm. So I had to continually, it was a losing of my ego, a chipping away at my down, my little ego, and then building up my soul's commitment. Mm. So it's a funny dance. There are things, the insecurity that the human condition suffers from mm -hmm. of not really feeling capable as good as they could be, mm -hmm. or not really feeling like they have what it takes. Mm -hmm. There's so many internal dialogue, who, little, and part of what I had to destroy was, I had to reevaluate all that and say, you know what, Deb, I had to talk to myself. You can do this. What do we have to lose? Mm. And that quality of real stick it to itness yes. was a result of me getting hurt. Mm. Mm, I love this. And what I also hear you saying is you had a really strong self-talk, right? Totally. Right? Like I you, had to do my internal dialogue and adjust it to say, we're going to do this. We've, I had to really do work internally to not implode mm. on what I saw. Because it was, I made mistakes. Mm. I mean, everyone out there, you can't be successful. You can start, but to the size of what you're speaking to as a millionaire. Yes. It's such a funny thing to say. But to the size and the magnitude of my success, 
I had to be willing to make those big fat mistakes. Yes. And I wasn't consciously unwilling. It wasn't like I was resisting, but when it happens and you're you're hurt mm-hmm. and then you turn on yourself and you're thinking, what am I doing? Mm. And then eventually I realized, no, 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 these were all teachings. Yes. And I really paid attention. And I kept stepping in. And then when I finally met Destiny and there was this feeling of mutual, mutual, mutuality and yep. respect and ease and no ego and soulfulness, yep. it was effortless. We had a six-year relationship without ever having a bump. Mm. Okay, so this leads me to, it's something I've noticed about you and I want to ask you about it. And that is, you seem to have no resistance or static on the line when it comes to asking for support including like how we even met and how ev- you're on everybody's stuff right now. In my opinion, it's like you were willing to say, hey, I, I have a thing and my thing is awesome and like come see it. <laughs> what is that? Have you always been like that or is that a, a muscle you've like worked That's on? such a great question. Um, I think that I feel so strong about astrology being medicine. It's kind of like a doctor who has all this tricks in his bag and how would he not, sh- like that would be, disrespectful not to mention sacrilegious if you're given these gifts and you're not prepared to that's feels like i've heard the story that in africa if you don't use your gifts the gods will come to get you Mm -hmm. i kind of feel like i had the pressure of knowing that i was gifted how dare i not share so it becomes i i think that's funny you ask it there is a certain enthusiasm or courageousness Mm -hmm. or i don't know big ovaries or balls or something that gives me the the ability to walk up to someone like I did with Sting. I mean, I worked with Sting for a year and a half and traveled the world with him. And when we first met in our first encounter, I did the weirdest thing. We had just finished the session. He went to the bathroom. He came back and I said, I don't know what possessed me to say this. I said, I have an idea. Why don't we switch chairs? You come sit here and I'm going to sit there. You hold the chart. I'll be Sting. And you ask me questions like I'm you. And he said, yes. <laughs> so he, we were in his dressing room with all the Moroccan rugs and the incense burning. And there he was, and he switched seats with me. And he started asking me questions, and I knew answers about his... I did not know he had six children. And I started intuitively, psychically being him uh. and knowing things that no one knew. And as soon as that finished, he went off and performed. It was the police reunion tour. That night, I got a phone call, and he said, that was the most interesting conversation I've had in years. What do we do next? And I said, I need to meet your wife. Uh. And that began the process of me traveling with him. And it was because, and what a weird thing to do. Yes. So to answer your question, I, I don't know exactly what gives me that courage. And mm-hmm. he could have said no, like, mm-hmm. no, I'm not going to trade seats with you. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think my kid in me tickles people. And then they suddenly show up with an innocence that provides us both yes. a youthful opportunity to let something new happen. Yes. And how do I do that? To be perfectly honest, I think... I had a mother who was very uninhibited and she looked just like Bette Midler, like literally, and people asked for her autograph and she didn't tell them it wasn't her and she would sign. It was so embarrassing. (laughs) But I learned from her, she was so uninhibited and it was terrible as a kid because it was like she would say things. But now as she's passed, I see that one of the gifts I inherited from her was this courageous, uninhibited, guileless quality that says to Sting, will you switch seats with me? Like, Yes. Who says that? I love this. And here's what I'm also going to add in. I think that also it comes from the countless hours that nobody ever sees of you living in your craft. That's the truth. Yeah. I think that, you know, especially in this sort of digital social media world, you can meet people and instantly you know whether they are actually living that thing and it's there or it's like rote and it's they're they're on their way. And I think people experience you and they're like, oh yeah, she's living all of that. That's so true. And I've been doing a straw. I've been obsessed. Mm. Like truth be told, mm. every single day. Mm. No matter, It's been almost 50 years. And I have never wow. not consulted the stars in the middle of the morning. when I, I've never not looked at the chart before I came to see you. I've never not gone out to a family like I did at your family Mm -hmm. and had all the kids charts sitting in front of me so Mm. you're right I am obsessed and I think that is an inherent soulful that's what I want to distinguish the ego wants money and it wants success and it wants to be able to feel special and it wants to look around at the neighbors and it wants to and the soul is just like so in love with the assignment and if the assignment's not clear and you can't answer the question what you want to be when you grow up then you go and you get figured it out like there's all these tools from astrology to the any to the human design to yes. you know Richard Rudis all this material do what it takes yes but when you touch that to your point mm-hmm. like I'm honestly I'm so in love with astrology mm-hmm. 
It's like a never ending love affair. Yes. It's effortless. It bleeds off of you. And it goes back to if you bring forth what is within you, what yes. you bring forth will save you. Now, there's another you piece here that I, save you. I that I want to like yeah. even touch on because um, I have an apprenticeship and there's 27 beautiful souls in there. And somebody was asking a question the other day about communication. And I said, um, communication is not just what you're saying, but it's the energy you, you're emitting, right? It's, it's, it's facial expressions, it's tone, it's energy, it's what you're wearing, it's all these things. And I find you to be, whether you're aware of it or not, you're really good at all those things. Do you think that plays a part in why people are extra attracted to you? Well, that's an, you keep asking these questions that make me think. I would say that I'm not conscious of that. Mm -hmm. It's my essence, once again. It's mm. coming from the inside out. I would say that my attention to the way that I smell, to the essential oils that I put on, to the softness of my clothes, to the quality of the jewelry, that I really, I am very intentional in this life, that right. everything, mm, secret sauce. Like, so if people are attracted to secret sauce or mm -hmm. to the yum yum factor, they're going to sit next to me and go, oh. Mm -hmm. And I encourage other people to yes. embody the sensations of the human and do it with real attention. Yes. So if that's what you're asking, it wasn't conscious. Mm. Mm, it's a result of total absolutely being in love with this place i find life hard i don't some people like i just worked with this woman she just loves life like mm. she can't wait to come back i find this place like it's a little hard on my system <laughs> I, I find it like painful when i hear about the there's too many words to use that will make me cry mm. and i find it assaulting the level of frequency that occurs here mm. at the same time i don't miss a single opportunity to like like when we had lunch, like I was very deliberate about what I picked out. Mm -hmm. And to let the food... Mm -hmm. So I think the question is, whether you like it here or not, whether you're depressed, whether you're anxious, whether you've got... Are you eating this life alive? Yes. And that's attractive. I think that's magnetic. Isn't yes. that the magnet that happens? And in communication, you when I go to speak, you feel me. Correct. thousand percent. Yeah, there's... there's. Um, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. There's also... Another piece I want to really just go to the like brass tacks of things. And this is just like a selfish question. And I think it'll help them too. Because the story I make up from coaching all of these coaches and different healers, light workers, therapists, all that stuff, is they think that there is, there's like a, uh, I can't want a Range Rover. Or like, uh, right? Like, it's okay for me to have feathers and go to Bali. But for me to like want a million dollar house or to like live in Hawaii and Colorado would be, that'd be a bit much. How do you view like using the materials on the planet? So beautiful. I nicknamed myself the president of the Jews for Joys Club. Mm. The Jews for Joy Club has no members, but I made myself the president because I had to change the oi in my family. It was so like, oi, like there was mm -hmm. such a low grade non-worthiness that was built into and i'm sure it's true mm -hmm. for all of us mm -hmm. so i've done the work to say to myself you want to live in hawaii we're moving to hawaii you want to live in colorado for the other half of the year? moving to like i had to do the inner work to go over that that old story of my family that was handed to me mm. so it is not easy here we go again this is the work of being alive, like being deliberate about what you eat and how you dress being deliberate about your thoughts being conscientious to say millionaire I could actually give myself the gift of having an abundant lifestyle with guilt-free cards. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the guilt-free cards? Oh, that's right. You just change your thoughts. Okay, that sounds like a big, easy, hard thing to do. It's confusing. <laughs> and it's up to reading his book. It's up to understanding that there are certain beings who got it. Mm -hmm. And it was by mistake. I'm just going to tell the truth. I learned it because I did live with a lot of guilt. Mm. Like, I didn't think I could live in Hawaii. I, when I got that house in Hawaii, which was a result of the school, when the school started, I kept calling my best friend for the first month, and I'd say to her, I'd be walking around the house, and I'd say, are you sure this is my house? Like, did we buy that? Did they tell me again that I own this house? Because it was so out of my range. Yes. And I had, to, she kept saying, my best friend's an NLP expert. And she kept saying, take up the upper limit, take up the upper. And every yes. time I'd hit the upper limit, she'd say, let's raise the bar. So I had to, like consciously with her help, every single time I felt myself self-conscious mm -hmm. or beyond my expectations, I had to consciously mm. do the work. Okay, so what I'm hearing 
is that the type of success you're experiencing is a team sport. Because whether it's destiny or your best friend and also you doing your own work, you are you allow people to, to influence and to support. Definitely. That's why they're watching this video. This is so important, Preston. I know you do this. You really encourage the coaching process, mm-hmm. the teaching process, being in the classroom situation, as does your wife. Yes. It is the most important. I don't care how much money you spend on it. Keep doing it. Because mm-hmm. when you finally have enough role models, which I hope I'm doing for you, I am from a different generation. I mean, it's so hard to believe that I'm almost 70. So when I grew up, it was not acceptable, one, for a woman mm-hmm. to run her own business, two. There were no astrologers. When my accountant called me, you're going to laugh, called me on the phone, this is about 10 years ago, and he said, what are you doing? This doesn't make any sense. Why, yes. are, we, why are we passing the million dollar mark? And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, tell me exactly what you're doing. And I was like, I have an online school. And he was like, I don't even know what you just said. Because yes. he was my age. So it's out of the range. Yes. You're saying, I'm willing to stretch my mind from where my grandmother and my parents could never go. That. So it's not easy. It's it's you're inspirational because you're so enthusiastic, Mr. Double Fire, having mm-hmm. your Aries moon and your Leo rise, your Leo sun. I am too, fire. But there's many of you watching this that are much more reserved and cautious, and so you should be. So in that case, you follow your rhythm. Mm. You take the classes, you take the notes, and you're patiently watching the changes that you can make. You're not going to do this overnight. Isn't there a book about an overnight millionaire or something? That's, that's not this book. No, it's not this book. <laughs> no, it's it's. Overnight millionaire in consciousness, right? So we we offer the vibration first, and we tune into what is because it it is immediately, and then we watch as the manifestations continue to happen and love what is like we like it was the top of the mountain. And I would do all that I'm doing right now for free. Correct. Like that's another big piece. I thought because I was thinking about this interview and. Just, I've been hanging out with Garen Jones and I watch his enthusiasm and his passion and I think to myself, if everyone had that kind of enthusiasm mm-hmm. and passion, if, if we were all on fire, if we were all so excited, but it does require the patience to yes. wait to let the fire burn. Not everyone comes with as much fire as we do. Mm-hmm. So permission to gradually study and use the role models that we're mentioning and give them permission to inspire you and then say to yourself, I can do it too. Correct. That's the, the, and we'll end on this, is that's the last piece that I'm also noticing is you've done a lot of identity work along the way. What does that to, mean? Uh, it means it's exactly what you said, which is you were in the house and the old identity was saying, this can't be yours, <laughs> right? And then you tapped into your, your best friend's consciousness and she reminded you <laughs> right. of who and what you were and you went, yes, I am that, right? And, and it, totally. I see you keep... Um, expanding, right? Even, and I'll take, we were talking about this off camera about how your 50th high school reunion, right? Your identity work is different than theirs. Totally. Right? The, the, the um, Deepak talks about this in one of his books about how the patients in a psych world who are not aware of time do not um, age at the level of what their number is um, like the ones who are. So the ones who are quote unquote crazy, but they, they know that they're 64, they age at, to the degree of what society says 64 is. The ones who are That's a little so more out of it don't grow to that. Right. And so you're crazy <laughs> is what I'm saying. You're crazy enough to not believe the bullshit. Yes. 70 years old, and you have more energy than most 20-year-olds. <laughs> it's so funny. Does that mean I'm crazy? Yeah, you're crazy in love. Yeah, it's true. I'm crazy in love. And crazy wisdom is a definite connection. Half mm. of wisdom is wizard smart, and the mm. other half is dumb. Mm. And to be accepting the dumb in wisdom, to know I don't know, to be innocent enough to keep studying, mm-hmm. to be innocent enough to pay attention and learn the lessons, I, the humility that continues to show up in my life as I age. I'm getting more and more humble to say, I don't know, but I am very willing, mm-hmm. to, as to your point, to listen. And when I see someone that knows what they're doing, I swear to you, I sniff. Mm. And I sit close to them. Mm-hmm. And I want to see, like, what are you doing? Like, how did you get like this? And I really do pay attention. That's the, I'm sure that's in your book. Yes. When there's leaders around that you see examples, yes. follow them around. Absolutely. I've done that my whole life. Uh-huh. Same. Beautiful soul, thank you so much for your time, your love, your attention. I hope that you receive some nuggets that you can put into action immediately. If you're watching this somewhere uh, where you have not purchased the book yet, make sure you go to PrestonSmiles.com forward slash book. Uh, The link will be below here. And I want to encourage you uh, to, when you do go get the book, 
One, don't just get one copy, get three and send it to two other people you love. Two, when, as you're buying it, as you are in the process of circulating money, because we don't spend money, we circulate it, right? To circulate means to return to sender. So as you are circulating that money, tap in and tune into the vision for yourself as it pertains to abundance and money. That's one. So get the book, get a bunch of them. Two, if you go to Deborah Silverman Astrology, Astrologer, Astrology, uh, Astrology.com, or find her on Instagram, YouTube, just type in Deborah Silverman. I'm also going to have all her stuff right below here so you can click on it and go right to it. This woman is a genius, uh, a friend, an epic, like young old soul <laughs> that just has so much life and vitality and uh, birds of a feather often flock together. And so if you if you are feeling the vibes and you're a part of our tribe, you are one of our birds, right? So come on in and play with us. Come on in. 